Coaxial transmission line transverse electric modes. We have seen in the previous video how to solve the problem of coaxial transmission line for transverse electromagnetic modes. And it should be noted that the transverse electric electromagnetic mode is characterized by cutoff frequency equal zero. This means that the coaxial transmission line can support transverse electromagnetic mode starting from DC. However, coaxial transmission line can also support transverse electric modes and transverse magnetic modes in addition to transverse electromagnetic modes. In this video, we are going to study the transverse electric modes inside coaxial transmission line. Transverse electric modes, it means that the longitudinal electric field component EZ equals zero, but HZ does not equal zero. Thus, we have HZ component, and in this case, HZ is presented in cylindrical coordinates as a function of rho, phi, and z, which can be presented as a modal function, small hz, as a function of rho and phi, multiplied by the propagation function in z, which is e to the power minus j beta z. Now, Helmholtz wave equation will be presented in cylindrical coordinates as follows. Partial squared by partial rho squared plus 1 over rho partial by partial rho plus 1 over rho squared partial squared phi by partial phi squared plus kc squared hz as a function of rho and phi equals 0. This is exactly the same wave equation for the case of a cylindrical waveguide. Or circular wave guide. And in this case, Kc squared equals K squared minus beta squared. As we mentioned in uh, the case of circular wave guide, the solution of Hz as a function of rho and phi can be presented by separation of variables as R of a function of rho multiplied by b as a function of y and we have seen that the general solution for b it was a sine n phi plus b cosine n phi and the general solution for r it was c multiplied by basal function j n of k c rho plus another constant d multiplied by basal function of second kind y n but of k c rho in the case of circular waveguide, we said that the second term or the second type of basal function is not suitable because it is infinity when rho equals zero. But in the case of coaxial transmission line, rho does not reach zero because rho extends from A to B. So in the case of coaxial transmission line, we have the two solution of the basal function kind, first kind and second kind. Okay. Now, by applying the boundary conditions, the boundary condition in this case is that the tangential electric field on the conducting surface would be zero. This means that the electric field E phi at rho equals A would be zero. And E phi at rho equals B it would be zero. So the boundary conditions are E phi at rho equal A it would be zero, and at rho equals B it would be zero. Okay. E phi is determined by the derivative of H z with respect to rho. So E phi is j omega mu over kc squared partial hz by partial rho partial hz by partial rho it would be c j dash n of kc rho plus d of y dash n of kc rho multiplied by kc kc with kc squared it would be 1 over kc where j dash n is the first derivative of 
basal function of first kind of order n and y dash n is the first derivative of basal function of second kind of order n okay now by applying the boundary condition we are going to set the value of rho equals a and equating this equation to b0 and then setting rho equals b and setting this equation once again to be 0. This means that C J dash N of KCA plus D Y dash N of KCE equals 0. And the other boundary condition is C J dash N of KCB plus D Y dash N of KCB equal 0. Now by solving these two equations we obtain the characteristic equation of the coaxial transmission line for the transverse electric modes. This characteristic equation is J dash N of KCA Y dash N of KCB should equal J dash N of KCB Y dash N of KCA which actually is the determinant of the matrix composed of the first equation and the second equation this should be zero because the output here is zero this is the characteristic or Aiken equation for the value of kc so we are going to solve this equation for the value of a and b to determine the cutoff wave number kc and from the cutoff wave number kc we can obtain the propagation constant B and from the propagation constant beta and KC we can obtain the other field components the value of KC that satisfies this equation then define the modes of TE NM modes N here is the order of the vessel function or in other words the order of the rotation in the phi direction and the value of KC is the cutoff uh, wave number of this mode TNM mode. From the, this cutoff wave number, we can determine the cutoff frequency of each mode. Okay. Actually, uh, this equation is solved numerically, and uh, it is called transcendental equation, such that we are solving two nonlinear equations together to find out the value of KC as an approximate solution. Kc approximately equals 2 over a plus b. So this is nearly the cutoff wave number for the TE mode or the first cutoff wave number of the TE mode in coaxial transmission line. Uh, here actually the solution of this transcendental equation for n equal 1 as a function of the ratio b over a. So, assuming that A equal 1, so the value of B here and the value of KCA here. Once we determine KC, the propagation constant cutoff frequency can be determined. For simplicity, we are going to use this relation. It is quite close to the actual solution. So, this is the cutoff frequency or the cutoff wave number of the first mode or in transverse electric mode in coaxial transmission line. The field distribution for different modes in coaxial transmission line, if we are talking about the transverse electric, electromagnetic mode, in the transverse electromagnetic mode, the electric field is going from the inner to the outer in radial form while the magnetic field is represented as circles around the inner conductor in this case the electric field is maximum at or around the inner conductor that's why the breakdown inside coaxial transmission line occurs at the inner conductor because the maximum electric field is concentrated 
around the inner conductor. On the other hand, the transverse electric 1 1 mode has electric field which looks like this. It is quite similar to radial, but it is not completely radial. And effectively, uh, it has variation such that it is positive here and negative here. Here it is always positive. So here it is negative. Here it is positive. And the corresponding magnetic field is half circle. It is not a complete circle. And the, the, the upper half circle is clockwise and the lower half circle is counterclockwise. So it is opposite here. The magnetic field in the same direction around the inner conductor. As an example, assume that we have a coaxial transmission line of type RG 401U, semi rigid coaxial cable. This type of semi rigid coaxial cable has an inner and outer conductor of diameters 0.0645 inches, and outer is 0.215 inch. And Teflon dielectric with Epsilon R equals 2.2 between the inner and the outer conductor. The question is, what is the highest usable frequency before TE11 waveguide mode starts to propagate? It means that I want to use this coaxial transmission line for transverse electromagnetic mode only. I don't need to excite transverse electric 1-1 mode. So it is required to determine the cutoff frequency of TE11 mode. In the present case, the value of B over A, which is actually the same as 2B over 2A, because here it is the diameter. So this is 2A and this is 2B. The ratio B over A is 0.215 over 0.0645 is 3.3 .3. now by using the approximate format for the cutoff wave number k cutoff a equals nearly 2 over 1 plus b over a which is nearly 0.462 now, by applying the value of A, which is half of this value, and convert it from inch to millimeters and from millimeter to meter, by multiplying by 10 to the power minus 3, we can obtain the value of Kc. Kc corresponds to omega square root mu epsilon, or in other words, omega over C square root epsilon r and omega it is 2 by f cutoff so f cutoff can be represented as c multiplied by k cutoff over 2 by square root epsilon r now we already know k cutoff and c is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power a Epsilon R is 2.2. This means that the cutoff frequency of transverse electric 1 1 mode is 17.7 .7 gigahertz. Usually, we don't work until this frequency. We should have some margin. So, assuming that we have 5% safety margin, so the frequency or the maximum frequency that can be used to support only transverse electromagnetic waves in such coaxial cable is 95 is 0.95 sorry 0.95 multiplied by 17.7 it would be around 16.8 gigahertz so this is the maximum frequency for such coaxial cable such that it support only transverse electromagnetic waves okay Higher than this frequency will introduce uh, higher order modes, will introduce dispersion, and it is not 
prefer to have this version in uh, the coaxial waveguides. It should be noted here if I'm interested in increasing this frequency, I have to reduce the inner conductor. And if I reduce the inner conductor to keep the same characteristic impedance, I have to reduce the outer conductor. And reducing the inner conductor will concentrate the electric field in the inner conductor, means that the maximum power would be less. So we have a compromise between the maximum frequency and the maximum power. For maximum power, it is required to increase the inner conductor. For maximum frequency, it is required to reduce the inner conductor. Okay? All right.